Christ away. His name is Jesus. He came to save us. He is a light, 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 light of the world, and it shine, shine, shine over the earth, shining bright, bright, bright. He is the light of the world. He is a light. Light, light, light of the world, and it shines, shine, shine, all over the earth, shining bright, bright, bright. He is the light of the world. The world is searching for an answer, ray of hope in the hopeless world. Who can we turn to? Where is my rest? lights away. His name is Jesus. He came to save us. He is a light, 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 light of the world, and it shines, shine, shine, all over the earth, shining bright, bright, bright. He is a light of the world. He is a light, light, light. Light of the world, let it shine, 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 all over the earth, shining bright, bright, bright. He is the light of the world. Whoa, 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 whoa. Light of the world and it shine, shine, shine all over the earth, shining bright, bright, bright. He is the light of the world. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you, I worship you. You are here. Healing every heart, I worship you, I worship you. You are here, turning lives around, I worship you, I worship you. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you, I worship you. 
way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way maker. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 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 Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday service. I am so happy you guys are here and we're here to worship the Lord together. And I love that song. That is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, the promise keeper. And light in the darkness, that is who you are. That's a, such a beautiful song. We should do that song a little more often. Um, but today I... Uh, I want to first start with uh, our memory verse, which is in Colossians 3.17. You guys remember that? Um, it, it starts something like this, right? And whatever you do, whether in words or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Okay, I think that's how I need to check, but uh, it's kind of hard with the camera and everything on me. But uh, it is uh, Colossians 3.17 that we need to memorize for this month. Uh, if you recall from last week's uh, uh, message, we had the, the Christmas Operation Child, uh, which is uh, like a shoebox that we're going to be sending to all around the world, to the another place where we're going to send a gift box. And uh, we're asking all of us to participate. It's a great opportunity to bless other people. You remember, as we were studying the book of Genesis, we we're talking about God bless us to be a blessing to others. And so we want to bless other people through the shoebox and also with the message of God. We want to send it out where people will receive this box with gift and also the message of Christ, how God is a truly loving each and every one of us by giving the greatest gift, His Son, Jesus. So we, will, we want to all participate in that. I would like to get all of our teachers to participate, and uh, uh, we're going to do that. So that's the, uh, it's going to uh, be within two weeks now. We only have two weeks to prepare. And so, um, yeah, so we'll kind of keep update on that, okay? Uh, before we begin, let us pray. God, thank you so much for this wonderful day. We pray that you will give us uh, your wisdom so that we may live accordingly, Lord. To live this life, Lord, it is by faith. So, Lord, help us to give you thanks and always, always walk by faith. Um, and that, Lord, that we will receive all the blessing you, you are promising us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we have been going through uh, book of Genesis where we are talking about a person. His name was Abraham. N later on, changed to Abraham. Now, it was chapter 12 where we spoke about him and how God has called him. God has called Abraham out of the country. He tells Abraham, get out of your country, get out of from your people, 
uh, I want you to get out of your family to the land that I'm going to show you. And Abraham believed God and, and did accordingly. And also God gave him a promise. And this is what we're going to be talking about. God gives him a promise, incredible promise. What was that promise? He said, I will make you, Abraham, to be a great nation. That I will bless you. And the whole earth will be blessed through you. That was a promise that God has given to Abraham. And uh, in that promise, I want you to understand something very important. And that promise is that that God is going to bless Abraham um, and through his descendant, through his offspring, through his child, that God is going to create a great nation. And that was a promise from the Lord. This is a crazy story if you think about it, because Abraham, or Abraham at the time, was 75 years old. And Sarah, his wife, was 65 years old. They were pretty much old people, and yet God has given this incredible promise. But do you know what Abraham did? He believed, and he did what God has told him to do. Now, he had faith in God, and then he obeyed. Because he has faith in God, he obeyed to receive that promise. And so if you recall from last week, we talked about how when Abraham was 99 years old, he still did not have a child. And Sarah was 89 years old. She was not conceived. So what happened? Well, three angels came. We talked about that, right? Three visitors and two angels and one being the Lord and has spoken to Abraham that he is going to have a son, that he is going to have a child. Now think about that. He was 99 years old. And God said, about this time, I will return and you will be with the child. And it's like, are you? And Sarah heard this, and you guys remember, she laughed, right? And like, yeah, right, kind of laughed. And she kind of doubted him. So that was the promise that God says, is that I am going to do something special. When Abraham was 99, you're going to have a child next year. And, and she laughed. And uh, one of the important things that Lord spoke, rhetorical question that he told uh, Abraham was that, is there anything too hard for the Lord? That was the question. The answer is nothing is impossible with you. God, you're the creator of the universe. God, you made everything that we see. You're God Almighty. There's nothing impossible for you. Abraham had faith in God and that was where we left off last week. Well, today that promise is kept that God fulfills his promise in Genesis chapter 21 what we're going to read together uh, in Genesis chapter 21 we see how God answered that promise that he made to Abraham now verse 1 and 2 l- let me read uh, this is Genesis chapter 21 verse 1 now the Lord was gracious to Sarah as he has said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age. At that very time that God has promised him. So remember the promise that God made, the Lord came down uh, about a year before, say that about this time you will have a child. Sure enough, he has a child. Sarah gets pregnant and she bore a child. And uh, so we see that God answering and, and their desire, their, their, their soul wanting this child to happen because God promised that they're going to be a great nation through him and his wife, Sarah. And now God answered that uh, promise through faith and prayer. So they, they have the child. And then verse 3 tells us, Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son Sarah bore him. When his son Isaac was eight, year, eight days old, Abraham circumcised him as God has commanded him. Abraham 
was 100 years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Sarah said, God has brought me laughter, and everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. Amen. So Sarah has a child. He was, Abraham was 100 years old, and Sarah was 90 years old. And they named him Isaac, Isaac. And Isaac simply means laughter, laughter, to laugh, right? Isaac means laughter. This week I had a funny experience where I was uh, walking around during the time of Hallelujah Night, and there was a group of family, they were taking pictures of the kids who dressed up, and they were taking photos, right? As I was walking by, I heard them, the man says, you know, he's taking pictures, now let's do funny Everybody funny, everybody funny. And I thought that was so funny. Everybody funny, you know, it's just so funny. Anyways, uh, how would you feel if somebody named their child named funny? Hey, funny. It's just funny to be a funny, right? And uh, that's what they named the, uh, the child. This old couple names a child Isaac, a laughter. But it was kind of different kind of laughter Sarah had. Sarah had a different kind of laughter, right? When she was told uh, years before, uh, she laughed in like, are you serious? Are you kidding me? Kind of laugh. But now she laughed with joy because she received the promise of God. And uh, it, this laughter uh, is actually... Uh, funny. Why? Because uh, it, it, imagine this, Sarah and Abraham, they're walking along and they were meeting other people and the, the people say, whoa, how cute the baby. And they say, oh, it's so cute. Uh, and, and the person asked to Sarah and Abraham, is this your great, great grandchild? You know, remember, Abraham was 100 years old. Sarah was 90 years old. This must be your great uh, grandchild, right? Said, and then Sarah will say, uh, no, that's my baby. That's my son. Abraham says, yeah, that's my son. You know, the old gray hair. Do you know anybody that is 100 years old, uh, 80, year, uh, 90 years old? I mean, they're old, Her hairs are white, and hey, carrying a baby, this is my son. You know, that was like, okay, right? So this is kind of strange thing. I'm telling you, this is a crazy story. But then again, what God has said, is there anything too hard for me? And let me tell you, there's nothing that God cannot do. He's able to do impossible. And they had this beautiful child. And the lesson that we want to get out of this is that God is promise keeper. God keeps his promise. When God gives you promise and he will keep it. You know, as humans, we try hard to, well, we make a lot of promises and we try to keep those promises, but we forget or some excuses or I don't want to do it or whatever. We promise something, we don't do it. I want you to know something that is who we are, but who God is, that God keeps his promise. God keeps his promise. Whatever he promises you, he will keep it. And, uh, I want to just share a little bit about my testimony. I mean, because uh, Abraham, like he was like 25 years after, you know, he gets the child. God promised him when he was 75 and now he's 100 is 25 years later. God answered the promise that he has told Abraham. He kept his promise. I want you to understand that it is sometimes it takes that long. And my story is simply uh, that, you know, I became Christian as a teenager and I have uh, two brothers and two sisters. And my, both of my parents are in the 80s right now. But 
Uh, when I was a teenager, I became Christian, and I really wanted my family to know the Lord. I really want them to f- have salvation in the Lord, so I began to, to pray for my family. I prayed for my brother, and my brother became, becomes Christian after about a year of like, telling him about God, and, and, and he becomes Christian. And the last one to become Christian in our family, everyone is, uh, is my father. And uh, I tried hard as a teenager. God loves you so much, Dad. And I told my dad, he said, oh, come on, you know, right, right. And he denies it. I remember one time I went to him and I, I h- hugged him like this, right? I hugged him and I told him, Dad, I want you to know that I love you. And I want you to know that God loves you so much. And there was almost tears in my eyes. But you know what my dad did? He was like stiff, like a stick. It's like he didn't know what to, how to respond to that. My hug and my love for him and, and that God loves him. He was like this. Did he believe in God? No. Every year I tried to speak to him, but he would not believe. So... I was about to get married to my wife uh, now, and uh, my fiance. she told my dad one day, she asked him to believe in God, and he says, how do I believe in God? And so he had the time where he asked the Lord to come into his life, and he becomes a Christian. Wow, are you kidding me? It took me 11 years telling my dad all I can to let him know that God loves you and he has a plan for you and God wants to save you. He wants to forgive your sin. I've been praying. I've been telling my dad for 11 years. He didn't respond, but God used my wife to just five minutes. My uh, wife back then, my fiance, she told him about God's wonderful salvation plan. And my dad said, yes, I want to believe. I want to receive Christ into my life. And so he did. Wow, it took me 11 years to see my father coming to faith. You know, sometimes... God promises you, but it might take some time. It could take uh, a month or it could even take years. But I want you to know one thing, and that is God keeps his promise in his time. Maybe not like the way we want it, uh, the time. Uh, we want a certain time this to happen. But if he doesn't answer that right away, I want you to know God is not forgetting about his promises. He will keep his promise. Amen. So that's just how God is. God keeps his promise. And uh, I want you to understand that um, God has given so many promises. When you read the Bible, Bible is filled with God's promise. And it promises about several things, and such as God's presence. God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I would always be with you. And that's God's promise in God's word. And God's protection. God said, I am your shield. I will protect you. God is the one promising you to protection, and he will keep that promise. And God says, I'll give you my strength. My power, God's power, he will keep that promise. I will strengthen thee, Isaiah 41, 10 says. And God's provision, God would always help you in need. God would always provide for you. Seek your first kingdom of God and all right his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you what is all this thing the previously he jesus talks about the clothes that you need food that you need to have and all these things that you need god will provide for you as long as you keep your eyes on me god will provide you know god has this wonderful plan for your life and God has his purpose in your life. I know the thoughts that I have for you, says the Lord, to give you uh, uh, peace. That the God will give you peace and that will prosper you. 
God will, God will provide all things. And God will give you rest. You need rest. God promised in His Word that come up to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 speaks about God promising you. But here's the thing. You need to come to me. You need to come to me. Come unto me, and then I will do this to you. Okay? So that's very important. And God will forgive us, and God will cleanse us. Uh, 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 9, He speaks about, If we confess our sin, He is faithful and just, and He will forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. That's His promise, that He will do this if you come, confess your sin, right? Uh, just so many, so many. God's plan for your life. You know, you, you live in a crazy world. All situations seems to be going out of, out of chaos. I want you to understand God has a plan for you. And that is that all things work together for good to them that love God. Romans. I, I want you to know that God will Make a way when things don't seem to be kind of like going your direction, such as Abraham, like he was about 99 years old and he still not had the promise of God. And yet we know that God says to him that, is there anything too hard for me, hard for the Lord? Nothing is impossible and he will do it. Although the situation, his condition was not possible. I mean, 99, a 99-year-old and 89, 100-year-old person cannot have a baby. That's just impossible. That's just like, doesn't make sense. But I want you to know that God makes it a way. How? Because God is God and he's powerful and he's able to do all things. And uh, so I want you to understand in the Bible, there are 7,487 promises that God made, makes to men. God gives promise to men. Seven, over 7,000 promises that are written in, in the Bible. And uh, all this Things that we talked about, God's provision, God's presence, God's protection, and God's faithfulness, and His guidance and plans for our lives, He promised in His Word. But here's the thing. How do you receive these promises that God has made? It's simple, okay? It's simple, but it's not easy to do, but it's simple. It's Abraham believed God, and then, what his, because he believed, what did he do? He obeyed God. That's how you receive uh, God's promise. Listen, you receive promise of God by faith. By faith. Faith alone. It is through faith, because he believed it in God, when God says, I'm calling you out from your country, and I'm going to, I want you to go to the land that I'm going to show you, and I will make you a great nation. And so what did Abraham do? Abraham believed God, and he obeyed God. Because he believed God, he obeyed what he says. So obedience was there because he believed. How do we receive all this promise that God gives us? So over 7,000 promises that God has given us. How do we receive it? To those who are called, those who, are, who love the Lord, those who are in faith, I want you to know that it is by faith you receive God's promises. And that faith requires obedience. Because I believe, I act. Because I believe, I act. So I want you to know that God has a great promise for you. Receive it through faith and faith. Because we have the faith, we walk and we trust in God. And uh, so that is the message for today. And uh, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the promise that you give us in your word. 
And I pray that we would believe what you say, trust what you say, and because we trust, Lord, may we continue to serve you and obey you, God, and so that, Lord, that we will be receiving all this promise, that, Lord, that you have made for us, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want you to have a wonderful week, and God bless you.